What's going on, everybody? I'm Derek Spallone here alongside Luis Garcia, kind of from Boone in the Park, the premiere in Chicago. And first and foremost, a terrific movie and uh, you know, very inspirational and everything like that. Coming from New York, talk a little bit about it. But first, I want to know where did your love for basketball, for both of you, kind of start from? I know you know we saw you guys both in the documentary, but where from the younger days, where was that kind of start? That passion come from? I mean, I grew up in New York. You can't escape basketball in the city. My father passed me in basketball when I was seven years old. That was 1973, and uh, it's been uphill since then. I started at six. My father was a soccer player, so okay. <laughs> I don't even know why and how I started, but um, I played an organized basketball in France and clubs most, most of my life. And I started dating and playing when I was 12 years old. And, yeah, I love it. And I know a lot of the players in there talk about their different nicknames. My nickname is D-Rock. What was your guys' nicknames, you know, growing up, or even right now? Was it, you know, one, two different nicknames, or was it kind of one that kind of stood out the most? And how did you get those nicknames? So shooting the film, I earned the nickname Baguette. Okay. Uh, because I guess the only French world that American knows. <laughs> my own boy, Bobito, gave me that great nickname. <laughs> and, uh, he hates it. Yeah, yeah. I don't like it. <laughs> and um, my other nickname is Behind the Scenes, because I can film and I can play basketball at work, so he's good. Would see me filming first, and then they would see me joining them on the court and kicking their ass, you know. And uh, <laughs> they really enjoyed it. And so one night, one kid called me. Yeah, I can see it. There you go. As far as I go, it depends on the court that I'm playing at. So like at Orchard Beach, they call me Billy Ball. At Five Ball Tournament, they used to call me Bag of Tricks. In the uh, 38 Nova League in Harlem, they call me Make It Happen. Okay. Yeah, but generally everybody calls me Papito, Who Bob Love. You know, like yeah. that. And what kind of makes New York stand out? They got like the Mecca, Mecca basketball, with, you know, Madison Square Garden, which obviously is where the Knicks play. And then you also have like Rucker Park, you know, some of those famous sports. What do you kind of feel like, you know, makes New York a little bit more different basketball wise than, you know, like you said, Chicago, maybe, you know, from South California, and some of the other bigger states out of the United States? Well, the, the beautiful thing about New York is that it actually has more in common with the rest of the world than a lot of people think. Um, in terms of, we play hard, Chicago plays hard, Japan plays hard, you know, we play half court, we play, you know, I think what separates New York though is the history and the cultural ties that it has, which we explore in our film. So to really answer your question, I just encourage people to watch our film, right. go to 200 parkcom let's go without a G. Now, or come down here to Chicago, like you said, uh, the Ice Theater, June 15th to the 20th, right over here. I believe that's a Saturday through a Thursday, so. Yep. That's at the Ice Yeah, it's playing at Ice Theater. Ice Theaters, uh, 3330 West Roosevelt. Shout out to Lisa Starks, Danzel Starks, for, it all, to give, for giving our, our film a run, a chance here in the chat. Okay. And then also, going along with that, I know you did some DJing and some music stuff as well to kind of start up. You feel like that was kind of maybe you know a mix of culture as well going on with basketball. Know music's kind of you know everybody loves music, you know, and especially basketball players and athletes kind of pumps them up. Can you kind of talk about how you got into you know from going from there to doing the voices for the video games like you said, and also you know obviously you know documentary and, and filming. But well, that's a that's a long history, right? You know, that's <laughs> a long history. I'm 46 years old. Let me just say that I feel blessed to have a DJ as a career, uh, to have a career as a DJ. And now to have made a film, my brother right here from France, Kevin Julio. Um, I wrote a book, I've done ESPN shows. Like you said, I've done video games for NBA Street Fighter 2, NBA 2K8. And, um, and I'm a ball player first and foremost, you know, before anything. So uh, it's really special for me to, to do a film during the park where I can play, pay homage to the sports that's given me so much. As well as I was a music supervisor, so I was able to bring my DJ sensibilities to the film too. And then kind of basketball for yourself, can you kind of talk about that as well from you know, kind of that and influence for yourself as well going on with you know, maybe music or just coming to New York from France? Yeah, you know, I mean, I grew up playing basketball right. and uh, doing skateboarding in the same time. Oh, okay. And both <laughs> sports, uh, the maker of both sports was New York City, so I grew up reading magazines <laughs> and watching skateboarding videos on the basketball videos and, uh, and the country. Like, so New York, well, New York City is the, the center point. So, I've always been influenced by New York City by US hip hop, especially hip hop on the East Coast. So it was like a natural uh, evolution for me to come to New York City and document it. Yeah. And just two more questions for you guys before we all head out. The, the, kind of the strong quote I kind of saw was, and though I'm not, not perfect here with the quote from Remembrance, but kind of saying, you know, before there was high school, before there was college, professional, there's always street ball. 
what does that quote mean to you and to yourself? And I, that's you know that's probably the best way to put. It. I know it's towards the end of the movie, but it's yeah, a pretty strong point to end it on. Can you a little talk about that? I, I, I wrote that. So oh, okay. I was, was that correct, kind of? Or was it? Well, we don't use the word street ball. Okay. Like yeah. for us, you know, we we really promote and advocate pickup basketball. Yeah, that's and the reason why, I mean, you can call it whatever you want. It's up to you, right? Okay. But the term street ball was really created by the media and by like brands okay. to try to market what happens outdoors. Whereas growing up, I mean, I never heard anybody call it that. No. Just say, yo, we're going to play ball. Oh. So pickup basketball is a lot different. I mean, like around the world, when kids hear street ball, they think of and one, because that's how, you know, it was very connected with the tour. Um, our film has highlights, has dunks, has crossovers, just like and one but we talk about the culture as well as the community of people that play ball outdoors in a free platform. You know, the park is open to everybody. So we really push the word pick up and, you know, and that's why it's, it's so beautiful because all the other experiences, whether it's high school, college, or college, are finite. Whereas you play pick up, the whole entire life. Right. And then that like, cool kind of, same kind of meaning for you or a little? Yeah, and where it came from as well. Uh, I'm French, I grew up playing people basketball at Bagnard. We have friends from Japan, we travel to New York City just to experience playground basketball and pick up basketball. Uh, we have friends from Spain, Greece, and we both travel all around the world and we play basketball in every place we went to. And you can see that the, the game is universal and uh, becoming an NBA player or a pro player is not the, the, the only option you have. If you don't make it, it's not, it's not a big deal. You can become a Playground photographer, or pick a basketball player, or whatever, or DJ, or filmmaker, and, and keep yeah. playing basketball your entire life. And our final question is, what's what's next? I mean, I don't know. Maybe right now you're, you're satisfied with what you have. But I know always, you know, kind of be content and to keep moving. Is there anything on the horizon? Maybe not necessarily documentary, but anything maybe your life goals to do before, you know? Well, let me first say that our film, for those interested, is available online okay. directly from us. Um, we're independently distributed, so do it in the park.com, let's spell without a G. See the trailer, you can download it, stream it, we also sell posters, shorts, t-shirts. Uh, we're going to keep on expanding that brand and eventually put out a book. Uh, we're touring the world with the film. Right now we have a soundtrack coming out this summer featuring a nine-time Grammy Award winner, Eddie Bamietti, who scored some of the scenes in the film. And um, we have uh, uh, some television broadcasts lined up for this fall and winter here in the U.S. as well as overseas. We've got a DVD coming out, Blu-ray coming out. So a lot, there's a lot of activity. A lot of power. Just yeah, just right follow the website or go to twitter.com slash doing it in the park, spell without a G. Is this, so that's the social network you're gonna find you just on yeah, Twitter? There you go. Okay. Instagram, Facebook, Hashtag, Twitter. Doing it in the park. Doing it in the park. Spell without a G. Okay. All right, my brother, thanks so much, Perfect. man. All right, thank, All right, you. Cool. thank you, guys. Thank All you. Right.